Good evening. Today we are gathered here at this service of thanksgiving to celebrate the life of Mohan Jayamaha. As we commemorate the 30th anniversary of his death, we thank God for his exemplary life on earth, where he left a lasting impression on those who knew him, on us, his family, who are better people because of him, his friends who continue to miss him, and his brother officers who remember him for his dedication and service to the nation. During his tenure of 23 years of service in the Sri Lanka Navy, he sailed the waters of life on calm and rough seas and weathered in storms and tempests at a turbulent time in the history of our country and eventually offered his life to the nation in noble and dutiful service. He trusted in God who was his refuge and his stronghold and having journeyed through the waters of life and the portals of death, he believed that he could safely drop anchor in a heavenly abode, being not afraid to rest in eternal peace. We are gathered around the table of the Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we ask for God's forgiveness and mercy for our failures and failings, we also pray that the Lord may have mercy on those who have gone before us. We especially pray for Mohan. That Lord may forgive whatever sins he may have committed during his lifetime, knowingly or unknowingly. The Lord may accept him to eternal kingdom. Let's pause for a moment to recall to our minds our sins.
and let's say it together, I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, through the blessed passion of your Son, that your servant Mohan may receive the forgiveness of his sins he always desired, so that knowing your truth, he may be worthy to rejoice at being called to behold you forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated and listen to the word of God. reading from the book of wisdom chapter 4 verses 7 to 15 the virtuous man though he dies before his time will find rest the length of days is not what makes age honorable nor the number of years a true measure of life understanding this is a man's gray hair untarnished life this is man's ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried off, so that evil may not walk his understanding, nor treachery seduce his soul. For the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade, and the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple mind. Coming to perfection in so short a while, he achieved a long life. His soul being pleasing to the Lord, he has taken him quickly from the wickedness around him. Yet people look on uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection his holy ones. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response.
It is my Father's will, says the Lord, that whoever believes in the Son shall have eternal life and that I shall raise him up on the last day. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me. So that's where I am you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a moment. Dear friends, as we celebrate the 30th, 30th anniversary of Mohan, we as a country, as a nation, as a community going through a difficult time, a challenging time. We thought when so many people sacrificed their lives for a never-ending war, once that was over, we were at peace. But rather, somehow, we were dragged into this situation. It's so sad, dear friends, in the human history People have been killing each other for various reasons. The worst thing is that people have been killing one another in the name of God as well. And for the religion's sake, for the country's sake, for the community's sake, and for the various other petty purposes as well, we had been, humans have been killing one another. And we know Mohan did, had, didn't have some natural death. It was a murder. He was killed. Whoever was bombed. And this is just one incident. And how many wives, how many children, how many parents, how many husbands have gone through this pain of their loved one being killed when are we going to stop it? So-called civilized world is doing it in a mega scale now. This killing is happening. Dear friends, we understand this situation because this, we have experienced it. Put it this way. If you have been killed, don't you understand when someone else is being killed? If you have gone through some kind of sickness, don't you understand the pain of another person's same sickness? Jesus was killed too. And he understood what that murder can do to a human person, to a family, to a community. And he knows it very well 
and we believe in Jesus who was murdered and dear friends Mohan is in safe hands because he believed in Jesus and in a way he was in a position like Jesus at one moment and he wanted to be like Jesus that's why he followed his way and at the end he left this world the same way that Jesus had to leave there's a difference Jesus was fully conscious till the end what was happening and he never let his spirit go down he lived up to his philosophy not that Jesus didn't have any pain when they tortured him he felt it he felt every bit of that pain and he went through it like any other human being and he knew what it was to die on a cross naked such an embarrassment he knew the pain of being embarrassed and still Jesus did not give up on his spirit he held it to himself he kept himself high even at the moment of death he could say father I own my spirit they can't kill my spirit they can kill my body but they can't kill my spirit therefore he had the spirit he had the ownership of his spirit and he could hand over the spirit to his father and Jesus said father into your hands I commend my spirit and again he lived up to his philosophy of love he could forgive anyone even he could forgive his murderers and he said father they do not know what they are doing just forgive them who on earth can do that only a follower of Jesus can do that properly that's why so many other martyrs have done that when Mohan was martyred or killed murdered he didn't have probably a time to think of any of these things it was just sudden if he had time probably he would have forgiven his murderers by now as he is with the Lord I'm sure he is forgiving his murderers he is forgiving this country and with those powerful prayers and intentions we can pray today dear friends for our nation for our families that we may come out this killing culture even now even today this is being continued in different formats in certain frameworks and certain people are not afraid of killing another person I'm not talking about the armed forces who are in a war and who happen to shoot someone who they have never seen I'm talking about the people who have the authority to take someone else's life this has to go away from our culture this has to be stopped and that can be done only with divine providence the change has to come within ourselves blessed from above and dear friends as we commemorate Mohan and his life his death we should feel even after 30 years of his death that he didn't die in vain we should feel that that sacrifice has a meaning that meaning can be brought to this world to this nation by those of us who are living here we need to do our bit we are responsible here we have different people from different walks of society and each of us have a responsibility my responsibility is to this church your responsibility is just to your household matters 
enough we can promote this killing free culture in this country we can oppose to it we can show our dislike to it that's an honor we give to this great man who sacrificed his life for this country for our community that's something that we can do to honor him and in the name of jesus we can do that as followers of jesus if you are not the believers of jesus still in the name of the religion that we believe the way that we follow we can promote that culture if you don't do that just remember we are hypocrites we do something against our own conscience we are doing something which we are not supposed to do if we support those killers and murderers therefore my dear friends today we are going to pray that the lord may bless us and we may have a heart and mind and a spirit which is not disturbed even in this challenging times jesus invites us not to let your hearts be troubled which jesus did even at the point of his death he was not troubled he was not disturbed no one could disturb him even when they were trying to kill him let's not get disturbed when people can manipulate us let's remember so many have died and they can even kill us but we should not get disturbed let's not be troubled and trust in god and be still and know that god is with us and let's trust in jesus let's trust in him and the eternal life he promises us he has asked us to be confident about eternal life and he has said there's enough room there for this side i told you and again he is inviting us to trust him so that we have eternal life mohan did that and mohan that's why i said mohan is in safe hands therefore my dear friends we pray today not just for the eternal life of mohan he's already enjoying that rather we join mohan to pray for ourselves we ask mohan to pray for us we ask mohan to pray for our country for which he died that's the mission the lord in trust to each one of us today in this context that will be the greatest commemoration of this great man mohan who died for us for our country that we can do let this be our prayer during this holy eucharist amen now let's stand and join the prayer of the faithful prayers of the faithful your response in praise and thanksgiving we pray to you o lord please repeat in praise in praise and thanksgiving we pray to you o lord we glorify you father for the resurrection of your beloved son jesus which gives us hope and the assurance of an eternal home where we rest when all life's work labors are done and await the day when we shall meet all our loved ones again for this undeserved gift an amazing grace we pray your response in praise, in praise and thanksgiving we pray to you lord 
We thank you, Father, for the life of Mohan, his loyal and dedicated service to the nation, his love and devotion to his family, that his memory will continue to be cherished and his life be a model to emulate and an inspiration to others. We pray your response. In praise, in praise and thanks, we, we, we pray to you, Lord. We praise you, Father, for all those who, like Mohan, lay down their lives bravely and nobly for their motherland to keep it free and safe for others, that their sacrifice may be remembered with gratitude and become the seed for the growth of peace and harmony among all people in our land. We pray your response. In praise and thanksgiving, we pray to you, o Lord. We believe, Father, that in times of darkness and turmoil, you will always make a way in your own time and in your own discernment, making new pathways for us. At this time in our history, when we face many challenges, much like in the past, that we will have the leaders we need to bring peace and unity among all. We pray your response. In, in praise, praise and thanksgiving, we pray to you, O Lord. We offer you, Father, all who are present here at this memorial service, that as they journey through the seas and storms of life, they will keep their focus on the light, which takes away the darkness and leads them to a safe harbor and an eternal reward. Offering them all, we pray, your response. In, in praise and thanksgiving, we pray to you, O Lord. In silence, let's pray for all our loved ones who are gone before us. We pray for our needs. Let's pray for our country. We may call these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated and join the offertory hymn. <clears throat> Thank you. 
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. We humbly offer you sacrifice, O Lord, for Mohan, your servant, that he who by your gift of the light of faith already knew you, may rejoice in holding fast you forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. So Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord and Master. In Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the eternity of time might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending your spirit upon them like the deep fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. At the last supper, Jesus took his bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took his chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. 
do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we hear this we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as celebrates the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that part again of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Malcolm our Bishop and all the clergy and religious. Now we pray for our loved ones who have gone before us. We pray for all those people who have died for our country. We also remember the people who were murdered on Easter Sunday 2019. We remember Mohan, your servant, O Lord, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our parents, our brothers and sisters, our spouses and our children, our friends, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on our soul, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Mother of Perpetual Help, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Alphonse, Saint Therese, Saint Joseph, Saint Gerard, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we him in in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. stand for the Lord's Prayer. Let's say it together. Our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against, against us, and, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all unnecessary anxieties as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now Amen. and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's share the peace of Jesus Christ with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. 
Once again, let's ask our Lord to have mercy on us before we receive Him. Lamb of God, you take away sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Dear friends, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited to receive him. Lord, I am worthy that you should enter into my roof, but I will say a word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to those who receive it. Dear friends, receiving Holy Communion is something sacred for us Catholics and we do it with a lot of faith, deep faith after much training and preparation. Therefore, I invite only the Catholics to receive Communion, others may refrain from receiving the Lord. Care 
spend a moment of silence thanking God for this wonderful sacrament through which he comes into our lives let's thank God for the gift of life we are ever grateful to our loving God for the life of Mohan for the wonderful man he was to all his family and friends and to everyone whom he met. Moreover, we are grateful to our loving God for the eternal happiness offered to him in faith and the promise of eternal life given to us. Let us pray. Replenished by the food that renews and gives life, we pray, O Lord, that our brother Mohan, strengthened by it and cleansed from all sins, may pass over to the company of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, Lord, be with you. Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Admiral Tisar Samra Singer to speak a few words. Good evening. It is my high privilege and profound honor to be part of this woman occasion of remembering Admiral Mohan Jamaha who made the supreme sacrifice 30 years ago to be exact. Commander of the Navy sir, Mrs. Jamaha, Chanaka, dear grandchildren and the spouses of uh, Chanaka and Himara although she is not here and the other senior officers and other well-wishers, friends and relations of Admiral Jayama's family. On a personal note, being a junior officer to Admiral Mohan Jayamaha, exactly 50 numbers junior, as per the Navy goes, my first experience I will share with you, or the, my personal experiences so that what I mean and what I say is you can trust it. 1975, 16th of July, as a young cadet, 10, year, 10 months into the service, along with my colleague, I was asked to come to Navy headquarters to meet the commander of the Navy, Admiral Gunasekar, for a good reason. But before I could enter, I had to go through the protocol. There was a young, tall, handsome officer, flag lieutenant. I didn't know his name, but I knew there was a best cadet, best cadet called Jayamaha. Cadet Jayamaha. So he saw us, took us to a corner. Those in the Navy will know, took me to the boardroom. And he inspected me and my colleague and adjusted the uniform in both of us. And we were treated how a cadet would be treated. So that was my first glimpse of this young officer. Then destiny took me to SLNS Balavata as an additional officer in 1977 who the commanding officer was Lieutenant Jayamaha. The professional competencies, values that he inculcated in me as a young officer trying to learn the way about in the Navy in the formative stage was absolutely amazing. I'm so fortunate. His attention to detail, professional competency, management, leadership, correspondences, behavior, and his meticulous handwriting. And how he guided young officers, not only me, all of us. When I happened to get married during that time, my wife, Malati, is here, and Mrs. Jayamaha, 
and Ms. Uh, Lieutenant Jayama gave us the first dinner invitation to a residence of an officer. First time in my life. Those are traditions that the Navy practiced, that you call your junior officers for a meal in a different atmosphere. And how grateful I am to them for that, the way that Mrs. Jayama hosted us and how he made us comfortable. Incidentally, my first drink with a senior officer was officially was that. Then again, as a coordinating officer, late Commodore Marshall, Admiral Jayama was his staff officer, and I happened to be the junior staff officer in Trincomalee. So all this along, I learned a few things out of him. He was a man of absolute integrity, absolute professional competency, man of character, honesty, competence, and he made all of us comfortable around him. He always raised the bar, maintained very high standards in everything what he did and what he said, and even his dress. He was always immaculately dressed and ideally attired. And he made all his juniors very proud of him. We could emulate him in which of the way he behaved. I say these things with absolute feelings and having experienced it, serving under office of his caliber. So we today remember him having sacrificed his life for us for a better future. As we remember him today, there were two other senior army generals who gave life along with him, with other soldiers and some army officers, and 29 other military, police, personnel who sacrificed for the sake of our country. So we need to remember and respect them. Admiral Jayamaha was highly respected and highly wanted in the Navy. Unfortunately, his contribution was cut short. His leadership was cut short to the Navy. So we missed him in our long careers, and he advised me. He used to call me Samara Singer. Later, he became Tisara. He said, Samara Singer, you need to be the best in whatever you do and achieve the top spot all the time. Strive for that. And I believe I followed his instruction to, to whatever the extent. And today we remember him with gratitude. So he has made his parents proud. He has made his alma mater proud, St. Joseph's College. He has made his wife and children and grandchildren and their spouses proud. He has made his superior and subordinate officers and sailors proud. He has made our beloved Navy proud, and he has made our country and nation proud. So with that, I thank Mrs. Jayama for this great honor that you have given me to speak a few words from the bottom of my heart. And uh, as I believe in my religion, may he attain Nibbana and may he rest in peace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Admiral Samrasinghe. 
on behalf of the family i'd like to invite all of you outside for some refreshments while thanking you once again for your presence today thank you